Hey, what's happening boys and girls? Thanks for stopping back by the channel today, right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. That's right, we've got another updated toolbox store coming your way. Per your guys' request, we've got all kinds of cool stuff to be able to show you. The last time we did a toolbox tour on this specific setup was about a year and a half ago, so I've purchased a lot of tools since then, done a lot of reorganizing, moving stuff around, so coming at you, we'll get into this tour. So the toolbox itself is an 84 inch Epic with the matte black paint with the deep blue chrome trim on it. I think it looks pretty good and there's not too many of these out there that you actually see. Got the badges blacked out on it as well as the black covers for the keys inserted right there. The toolbox does have the power drawer right here in this one and it has one power cabinet. Both cabinets on them are the 30 inch cabinets or 36 inch cabinets, not sure which one that is. Has the hutch with the power as well as the black bed liner top to it with the power built into the rear corners in that one. So let's get into the hutch here because I've got a lot of questions on the computer setup and screen setup on this one specifically. Starting down here on the right end, we ended up picking up one of these snap-on fans. Usually I don't have it on during the winter time, but because it is showtime, there it is. I uh, got the snap-on drawer organizer set, or little cubby organizers. Uh, these things just lift up and you can take them out of place. I have like license plate bolts, 10 millimeter bolts and nuts, stuff that I use most often. Tape for taping up windows and taping off certain things. A couple little extra cords and power items. All kinds of little stuff to it there. Keep a little receipt book back in here with that little area right there. Gloves, extras on top. And then I've got my angled keeper right here that usually houses my right angle drill as well as the old school that I still have air ratchet. Usually I also have my long extended reach quarter inch ratchet up here also but have taken that one home for some projects there. Like I said power built into the back section able to power my iPads and stuff one of my Milwaukee chargers because I can't have enough of those because I use those tools quite often. Bed liner top and I do really like this bed liner top. Only thing that I've got negative and we'll see if it shows up on camera here is I've got a couple of small bubbles right here that my snap-on guy said hey we will fix that for you or we will replace it no problem but to do that one, we would have to pull off the cabinets, pull off the riser, just to get that off. So I'm kind of holding off on that one. And then we've got our screen setup. That does have a computer that runs to this one, so we'll go over that one in a minute. But as for the actual screen, it is just a Roku TV that got the remote here for it, a 28 inch Roku TV. And no, I don't have any kind of fancy mounts or anything like that. Actually, the back two screws holes on the TV, I've got two screws coming out of that with some mechanics wire loomed between the two, hanging on a hook on the back. It's not like this toolbox moves around. It doesn't really have to be all that kind of sturdy. It's sturdy enough there to be able to hold in place from what I need, it's not going anywhere. So nothing fancy, it's just kind of hanging there. Power strip on this side, and then from the computer, I have a USB splitter to be able to access the USB ports that go into the actual computer itself. So I don't have to open my cabinet every time to be able to have access to where I want to plug into USBs. And then the Bluetooth receiver for the mouse and the keyboard is also plugged in right there because Bluetooth doesn't go well through toolboxes and all. So that is plugged in there also. Then we've got phone charger here and then 
the main lights that I use most of the time, both of the switch blades that I showed on the recent Nifty Tools video, the magnetic charging set from Snap-on, and then a small Snap-on pocket light there with the little red laser sight to it too. Pretty fun, that one's just for messing around. Doesn't really do a whole lot of lighting, but yeah. And then as for lighting in the hutch, I have the Snap-on setup, LEDs, as you can see with the switch magnetic switch pickup so when you close the hutch it'll pull away and turn it off opens it up switch gets contact turns everything back on so that's the hutch well then let's just get into the left cabinet while we're talking about computer stuff so we can talk about the computer that's in here the computer that i'm running right here is a Dell mini PC got an i3 core processor in it uh, no disk inserts or anything fancy like that it does have a couple USBs and more USBs on the back to which I have the extender coming around to the inside for the USBs right here also as you would think even though this thing does have built-in Wi-Fi you can't get Wi-Fi when the cabinet is closed obviously so there's an extension going up top to a Wi-Fi extender here on the top of my box so it is able to get Wi-Fi just perfectly on that one there we are so works really really well we've got special tools in here nifty tool of the year right there coolant vacuum filter cylinder leak down oil pressure testing uh, drill pump that I picked up from Matco really cool pump right there uh, the drill doctor for sharpening drill bits, the snap-on ones that I have. I uh, got some tool oil, Genius Boost jump pack. Got my launch code reader, just the small one that's able to do quick jobs on the go. That's pretty much everything on there. Down in here, we've got a glass jar for testing fuel samples. Other tools that don't fit really down into the drawer area. Uh, got some of my pneumatic tools that are kind of dinosaurs kind of tucked back in there. Gloves, a couple extra batteries, saw blades for the reciprocating saw, which is also tucked in here as well. Go down into the power drawer section of the cabinet. And these are the ones that I generally don't use nearly as much. The ones that I use more often are in the drawer of the actual toolbox. So these are the ones that I don't use as often. Got the 3.8 Snap-on, the grinder polisher, Milwaukee drill, pneumatic riveter. Got the old quarter inch cordless and then the big mamma jamma snap-on i don't like getting that out i like saving that for testing and when uh the big daddy needs to eat so that's the biggest baddest one i don't like having people borrow that one and stuff so it sits back in the back there a couple of the chargers right here extra little uh change out things for the big grinder that i have also power outlets i do like the power outlets in here and as well as the usbs that are built into it as well here in the door, I like to keep my caliper paint and extra cleaning supplies for the box. Then down to the next area. <clears throat> Relay circuit testers, got test leads, the battery tester box, as well as my electric brake testing tool, which that is a killer tool. Got some terminal tools as well. Extra wires and wiring. That old dinosaur tool, who uses that anymore? I, I don't think I've used that in like three years, but you know what? Just in case, it is there. Got dial caliper for doing and setting up rear ends. I did use that one just this last week. Uh, Astro pneumatic for rib nut installer, which I hate that it's so big. It does work when I have certain space to get to it, but it does not always fit into very many areas. And then for the bottom section, this is just kind of extra stuff. This is a drawer that I could use for more things, but right now it's just extra stuff. Wire looming, um, you got staples, or I should say hog rings for my pneumatic hog ring gun for when I work on a lot of seats. A couple little extra um, trim pieces and everything in here, and some matting when I need to put different padding in for like um, 
areas on these conversion vans and certain specialty items where I have to put a pad down. And then we'll coast along the top here, making sure to check out the sweet old leg lamp. We've got that one just to appease Captain Ron there so he can see it every day. Makes him extra happy. And the Rust Belt Blue Line flag. Thanks to Alex, uh, awesome veteran, Marine veteran who did and made these. We might do a link later if he gets into making those more, I guess, production wise, but he does a great job at doing that. Let's get into second cabinet here. In the side, just a couple of sprays, cleaning devices, lubes. Top section, we've got our fluids, our specialty stuff. Now, extra ones in the shop and everything. We do have places for extra lubes and different fluids and stuff over off to the side, but I like having these because these are the specialty ones that uh, we don't go through too often. So that's where I keep a lot of that stuff. Get into the second drawer here. We've got our excess bolts, bins, paint, and our Plasti Dip stuff. I like having the primer paint for when I uh, cut through a lot of things. You don't want to leave uh, open metal or anything. So we've got that in there. Open bins, bolts, 10 millimeters. The normal nuts and bolts that you would normally need. Got a part for my Mini Cooper that I haven't put in yet. So it's sitting in there. Here we've got some extra kits, sets of lug nuts, tape, um, hand cleaner, a couple of these extra holders that I'm not using currently. Like I said, a lot of this side box is just extra things that, you know, doesn't really have to be in here, but I'd like having it in here because I like having my own stuff that doesn't really get picked through in the shop. I'm sure older guys know what I'm talking about. Here we got my extra hats and then we have a bunch of test parts. Now I know I catch a lot of times for having test parts, but you know what? It helps me with diagnostics of stuff. And no, this isn't stuff that was just randomly misdiagnosed or anything like that. Like I've got coils here from different various vehicles that'll say, like I have it written on here, uh, cylinder five in op. I've got some tipums and stuff that says wiper output in op or cylinder six coil output in op, stuff like that. It's nice having a lot of these, especially window switches for random things so that'll have, you know, right rear window doesn't work, but it's nice for having like a vehicle that comes in, a driver's window doesn't work and it's just easy enough because those window switches pop out in a matter of seconds and you can use those to just pop it in and see, oh yeah, that was it. Takes diagnostics down to a whole whopping 30 seconds. So. Pretty sweet there. Extra pickup for the truck and a belt that I have. I picked up extra for the truck as well. And then we get into a couple more necessary things. We've got our standard and extra lug nuts, lug nut specialty keys, uh, tools to be get out the rounded off lug nuts, flip socket from Blue Point, more lug nuts lights and some uh, nice covers for these pro masters that i work on all the time here's the important drawer i use this one quite often i like repinning a lot of the connectors that i work with especially when i get into some of these older vehicles that i'm doing uci's on and redoing a lot of the harnesses or connectors that you know we're going to put a pigtail on well i like to find the pins that are correct so i've got probably a hundred sets of different wires and pins here because all these sets come with double the amount that you need pretty much in every job. So I like having all of those extra just in case for those jobs. And then down here is just extra junk. A couple extra little sensors, casters, things from the toolbox, camera stuff. This is just nonsense that I could use for a lot more in that area, but I'm not needing to use it yet. So there's that one and that is the right cabinet. Light, oh, I forgot to point out, the lights that I have in both of the cabinets are the magnetic pickup ones from Snap-on also. So you get the magnet close enough to it and shuts off. 
I like those. Those are very bright, very nice. All right, now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the main box here. The big drawer, sockets, extensions, ratchets. I like to split it up half inch, three eighths, quarter is about what I do. And then we've got some specialty ones that line the front here. Sets that I've had for a long, long time. Uh, my deep snap-ons, I've got this deep set of standards that I'm pretty sure I bought at Walmart or something like that. Great med something. <laughs> yeah, that shows you how much I uh, don't use standards, so I don't really worry about having nice ones of those. Very, very rarely do I actually use them. Axle nut sockets, lots of random ones, snap-on, and a couple of aftermarket ones as well. Just for the random bigger jobs that I do use them for. I do have snap-on chromes for the 3 8 FDX sockets, which I use quite often those as well. I love those. Just picked up this set off of Snap-on this last week, so we'll probably have to throw those into a tool video here soon. Snap-on shallow set, shallow impacts. Found a need for these uh, kind of pretty often that I just kind of am putting them off and was using chrome ones and breaking the chrome ones as I probably shouldn't have. Wobble Plus extensions, big need for anybody who uses extensions. Uh, these are probably the best ones I've ever had. Wobble Plus in both the 3 8 and the quarter inch, half inch ones. I don't use the extensions very often. These ones I just have the wobbles uh, for the use of kind of the 28 millimeter for doing the Cummins uh, fuel filters. Getting into that area is a little bit of a pain, but just enough wobble out of these wobble extensions to get down into that area. Chrome quarter inch swivels, definitely a must have. e -torques. 12 points for certain applications as well as I've got my insert uh, sockets back here for putting taps into. Gear wrench bolt biters, those are great, come in handy. You don't use them very often, but they do come in handy when they are needed. Ratchets, big boy, half inch, got a really long 3 8 with the uh, bigger neck on it, shorter half inch, this is probably one of my older ones. <laughs> Funny enough, I found that one in a radiator one day when I first started in the shop, so funny there. I made a video on making that one with the handle from Snap-on. It's the locking flex head, which I come to learn that I absolutely hate. So kind of sucks that I put this nice handle on a ratchet that I hate using because of that stupid locking flex head design. Snaps back all the time. Matco's. I've got their quarter inch extended locking flex head as well as the black 3 8 locking flex head. The thinnest head design that I've come to find. Never had an issue with that one. Works great. This is one of the first ratchets that I own. Just an FLF80 flex head. Really nice. Standard 3 8 couple of quarter inch ones. And then this one's great for in dash work. Got some bed insertions, oil filter removal, the long socket for taking the big spiked lug nuts off the aftermarket wheels. Got a couple other random ones that are just for other specialty applications, big Torx bits, 24s for the oil filter on 3.6s, spark plug socket, and then a couple of really long extensions here along the front. Got one that's a good three foot long and a couple other random ones. I like to have some extra ones in here, especially like this one that I just used to put on a socket and then beat the crap out of the back because I don't care about using that one. So nice to have a couple of tools that you don't really care about just in case you really need to get medieval and uh, destroy something. Everyone needs a set of these ball and Allens. Those work great as well. Got blue point set of Allens as well that covers just about everything metric and standard. All in all, pretty well put together. I do need to do some reorganization in this one. I'm waiting on a certain company to come out with their new socket organization to uh, redo this drawer and hopefully fit in a couple more things because there's a couple more sockets that I've got in my cart over there that I use more often that I have over in that one, but we will get to the cart.
Now let's move on down to the next drawer, which is going to be wrenches. Now from before, I actually had my wrenches down in one of these drawers, and I've picked up a lot of wrenches since then, used them much more often, and I needed more space. So we've got everything from the SP Tools ratcheting wrenches that go up to a 32 here. Ratcheting wrenches, we've got standard snap-on set, skinny set here from Matco. Got the Matco, which is the mountain style wrenches right there. Flare nut wrenches in metric, the standard stuff is gonna be over there. Snap on ratcheting wrenches. We've got the SP Tools ratcheting wrenches with the speed end for when that is necessary. Stubbies in metric and standard. The other standard flare nut wrenches. And then we've got standard wrenches up to, I think one and a half inch back there. Of course, all of these have to be divided out by toolbox widgets. These are definitely, by far, the best organization system for wrenches. There's no way I could have ever fit this many wrenches into one drawer. I still could utilize this area here for a couple more wrenches if absolutely necessary. But like I said, for the price and for how well they actually do, these organization here from Toolbox Widget is really awesome. Every time anyone's ever missing, it's got the orange indicator right there just to show you guys that it is missing, able to point it out really quick. Angled ones with the adapters are for the larger wrenches so they can fit into these shorter drawers right here. I absolutely love these things. As a matter of fact, I have a coupon code through them as well. Use code RUSTBELT, it's 10% off those on their site. I'll put a link to that one down in the description. We'll go down to the next drawer. Now we've got our pliers. Lots of pliers right here. All kinds of specialty ones from line wrenches, certain the brake, e-brake pliers there. Use these for putting calipers back in. Got a couple of things from Vampire tools here, their cutters, some of their other um, pliers here. Those are very, very nice to have. They grip like nobody's business on those ones. All kinds of these. I ended up, I really enjoy these Milwaukee ones for the vice grips here. Uh, they just work really well. I don't find that the teeth wear down nearly as fast because I, of course, you know, us as mechanics, we like to abuse these and use them on things we probably shouldn't that spin a bunch. So these usually wear out the teeth the most and the fastest. And as you can see, they are not that worn out right now. So they've been holding up very nice. Cobra pliers, the Gnipex, uh, Matt co-offered those on a killer deal, so I ended up picking up those. The PWZ pliers from Snap-on for doing alignments. You cannot do alignments without a set of PWZs. Those by far are the best ones there are. Got a rack with these are my probably most used pliers, just the standard set from Snap-on, the standard needle nose and the dikes, extended dikes are in here. Got my linesman pliers there from Vampire Tools also. I use those all the time. Those are killer, killer pliers. The remote access hose clamp pliers from Snap-on. I love using that one. The only thing that sucks more often is the spring for the return in the head. Finds itself wearing out or bending or breaking more often and uh, he just ends up warrantying them out for me. So I do like that one. Uh, a couple of crimp pliers for electrical connections and stuff. Uh, picked up this set from Matco for doing trim clips and everything. Very nice on those inner fenders. Flush cuts, gotta have those. Uh, the crimps for the band style clamps, need to have a set of those as well. All in all, I can fit a whole lot more pliers in here. All I have to do is get some better organization for it, which hint hint is coming up shortly as well going to come out very soon. I know I'm a little bit long-winded when talking about these things, so we can speed up through some of these smaller drawers here. I can't help it. I like talking about tools. So we've got our tools for our air hammer, which is going to be over in that drawer. Tools for that one. Chisels, uh, measuring equipment, caliper, dials. We've got our fuel filter wrench for diesel fuel filters. A couple of air tools, scrapers, oil filters. It's kind of more of a miscellaneous. Got our um, lady fingers here on those. A couple of random brake tools. 
specialty tool for GM 3.1s and 3.4s for when doing the getting the push rods out from those. Move it on down to the next one, which is my Matco grid that I did on a video itself, so I won't talk a whole lot about that one. If you guys need to, go and check out that video where I put this whole grid together. Probably one of the biggest pain in the butts I've ever done, and to be honest, I'm not really happy by it because if I shake anything out of place, it ends up popping out of these because they're not meant to hold anything but really straight screwdrivers. So as much as I've tried to keep them in place, they really haven't worked out that great. So we've got some new ideas coming out for these and for this drawer hopefully here in the next couple of months. Move it on down here. We've got the tap and die set for Matco. Uh, threading, or re-threading kit is this one. We've got the screw extraction kit on that one. A couple of other gauges, plastic rivet installers, couple other random small hand tools, wiper removal stuff, battery tools, that kit from Matco, re-threading kits, got my specialty uh, fuel pressure adapters, a couple Allen bits, a couple re-threading taps and everything. A little bit of miscellaneous, but stuff that I use quite often for diag. And then we've got our bigger tools got a reciprocating kind of multi-tool for doing a lot of stuff on conversion vans the big hub shocker did that on a video not too long ago with the adapters there we go got our tech angle wrenches got our inner tie rod tool that is a quarter inch manual torque wrench on that one and then we've got our belt tool and then the serpentine belt remover tool in there as well hub use that one for when the axles won't come through the hubs grips onto the bolts on the outside and pushes the hub uh, pushes the axle in through the hub pretty neat tool that's my bigger drawer there at the bottom all right now we'll hop over here to my right side drawers the first one here is for paperwork and receipts extra keys that we have that were damaged and not working we have a guy who kind of comes and picks those up test dvds and cds for conversion vans as well here we go a lot of our bits and everything we've got our milwaukee bit sets we've got the snap-on drill bits the matco hyper step drill bits which are the best money i've ever spent on drill bits just an fyi to you guys if you're looking at getting a really quality drill bit set that set right there top of the line best ones made uh, extended bits right there hole saw things for again more conversion van crap stethoscope a couple of uh, speed brushes for the drill as well some glasses safety glasses and then uv ones uv lights for finding the, uh, ac leaks thermal gun right there and of course hot glue gun because again conversion vans yeah literally hot glue not gonna lie about that one and then we go down into our big drawer which is just a lot of specialty uh, kits and everything we've got a vacuum test kit this one's extra bits we've got um, extra gauge set our I think this is a three jaw puller yeah three jaw puller on that one cooling uh, system pressure test kit with a couple extra adapters for specialty vehicles hybrids and pro masters compression gauge set there on that one a couple extra uh, dial calipers brake line tools caliper reset tools like I said just a couple of random things in there so let's hop over to the smaller drawers on this side because the top one is a junk drawer because junk. Everybody's got junk. You measure what a man is made of by his junk drawer. Keys, knives, extra fl pens, flashlights, tape, test DVDs, flashlights, extra contacts because I do wear contacts. You know, junk. There we go. 
electrical drawer and this one needs kind of reorganized because this has been a lot of a catch-all in the last uh, couple of weeks for me so this one totally needs redone really really it needs to be into a bigger one of these drawers but you know we might eventually get there butane test butane torch torch uh, 300 on that one crimpers got the strippers I know somebody else makes those but I got those off snap on just because of the point that uh, they go dull after so often and he does replace them for free SP tools battery analyzer this thing is freaking amazing it's super accurate super fast and it does give a printout for the customers comes with extra rolls of the thermal paper if you guys are looking for a good battery testing tool this one is definitely the one to get wiring fuses relays bulbs there we go test leads extras goody stuff then we get into the power drawer this is probably one of the most open drawers aside from the socket drawer that i have we've got the quarter inch electric ratchet snap on three eighths one we've got the fuel brushless quarter inch hex driver blue point air hammer use that one quite often and it actually captain ron still use that one more than anybody milwaukee 3 8 stubby can't beat it you really can't for any kind of smaller 3 8 tool 250 foot pounds of torque on that one you really can't beat it snap on screw gun uh, with the clutch on it and then we've got our milwaukee got the uh, brushless fuel one of that that is the half inch mid torque which i use most often use that one and then i also have the bigger high torque milwaukee one as well and that one comes at like eight and a half pounds so super heavy on that one i normally i had my sp mid torque one here but i took that home for working on the side by side and stuff on a lot of those videos so um had to use that one as kind of a backup here at the shop more lights because of course even after having all of those lights i need more lights you got the e-carb got the e-card got the neck light that's here charging and then all of my chargers in here got the milwaukee dual one snap on dual charger for those for the 18 and the 14 4 extra snap on 14 4 charger in the back and again the same charging um, block there as what is in the cabinet as well that's the power drawer moving on down we're getting through this quick guys hammers 40 ounce i think it's a 20 or 16 ounce and then my lovely unbreakable wiltons i love these things uh, i got the 12 inch handle and the 16 inch big old bad boy right there soft grip got the specialty tribus ratcheting flare nut wrenches very nice tools as well use those in certain situations where i have to um, use the ratcheting flare nut wrench which is not too often but you know they are available for me i uh, got some extra staples and hog rings there small little three gel puller wire brushes yada yada then into more of the diagnostic area for me we've got Tesla's thermal imager got my uh, big meter from Snap-on. Got the um, meter slash amp clamp here on this one. Power Pro, Power Pro butane kit there. Older Snap-on butane that doesn't get used. It's just hanging out underneath of there. Test leads and everything. The Snap-on multi probe that I absolutely love. Love using that thing. I like using it more than the uh the multi probe or the uh power probe i should say inspection camera hidden in there extra wires and extra things for testing test lights and that is also underneath there love using this stuff oh and got my uh, coil and plug interceptor for testing coil output without having to pull the coils that's also really awesome i think i had that in the nifty tool video also and that really is it for the main part of the toolbox so now we're going to move on to a couple of the side items that we have here for it first thing that we have is my handy dandy cart here this is just the nice little tool tray and everything and i use this most often for parts 
and bolts because it does have all the nice dividers and everything. Boltster organizer. I showed this over on Instagram and I believe I showed it on a Nifty Tools video. This is an amazing invention for um, all these bolts and everything that you guys need to organize in certain ways. It'll hold any size bolt that you have available. Keep it all nice and intact. Very, very heat resistant. I actually tried to take a torch to it right there. Didn't do much of anything to it. So really, really cool tool on that one. Got the uh, good old trusty stool over there as well as the Mopar fridge slash small toolbox with some license plate stuff in it. Uh, don't give that one enough show. Then we'll go over here, got my little shelving unit over here with my extra stuff. Brake clean bottle, extra jump pack here for charging things. And then we've got the pressure brake leader kit from SP. Use that thing all the time. Love it as well as the um, little bottles for catching all the brake fluid. Don't need to make that big of a mess. Then we've got the SP bag for when I want to take things home. Those things are like gold right now, if you guys don't know. Masks right now in this pandemic? Yeah. Got the snap-on inflator. I love using that thing. It pumps up tires pretty darn quick and it does not use battery power like you wouldn't understand. It, it is great on the batteries. Got an inverter for when I'm do, having to do specialty testing stuff on some conversion vans that have inverter issues. Got that one. A couple extra paints and uh, soap stuff there. Scale for doing testing and pressures. Filter for the Duramax. Jump cables when I'm wanting to test. See about bad grounds and stuff when I need better ground clamps. Then we've got our uh, Gorilla ladder which is just a stand for in front of vehicles, those bigger trucks and everything. Got a uh, big sledge back here, as well as this big old mamma jamma, SP Tools, SP33814, four foot pry bar. If you need something pried off, that is gonna do it for you. That thing is a killer tool, weighs probably a better part of 30 pounds awesome awesome tool and then my snap-on under hood light 14.4 use that one all the time too just kind of hangs out right there now we're going to move on to the side cart i was thinking about doing a special video just for this one we may here in the future but i absolutely love this thing added on a couple of things to it rubber mat here on the top love that thing three holster thing here for the side for the impacts that I use on those specific jobs. On to the right side, I've got the filter or the funnel buddy that I did a video on where I repainted it and everything flat black to match. Got some of these magnetic um, little shelves that I've got also more of them on the side of the box over there. But I like having those for when I open up the top, I will magnet them here and put random small tools, picks and stuff when I really need to use it. Because I do have that small side cart for parts and bolts and everything, and then I also have uh, this big roll around table here for other bigger parts, I don't really need to use this for anything but tools. So I've got my main use sockets in here that I use pretty much for every single job. Plus I really don't have enough room for more sockets right now in my big drawer. So I've got the 3 8 impact deep sockets, 3 8 impact swivels, and then the deep 3 8 impact swivels as well. The three pry bars that I use most often right there, again, it's a snap on one and a couple of crafts on one. I had my SP ones here, but I took those home for those videos. I miss them. I love the SP pry bars. A couple of random things in here, uh, brake hangers, heat wrap into the chop drawer. We've got our sealants, rust belt mechanic stickers that I got left over. Uh, some tape, AC O-rings, small grease tool. Next row down, we've got conversion van parts. We've got LED light strips, which go out all the time in those. We've got to zip tie everything on those vans. So we've got the zip tie uh, tool that clips them off flush cut so you don't scratch the crap out of your arm. Yep, pretty much all conversion van junk. 
And then clips and retainers. You got all kinds of extra clips, zip ties, more clips, random clips. Uh, metal clips, seals, extra stuff that you wouldn't think that you need. The trans clips, uh, brass washers, stuff that you you know wouldn't normally think you would need. I like having that here, good to go in the cart, ready to go. And then on the bottom, I got a funnel refiller, which I don't use really all that often. A couple of extra pieces of steel for when I need to use them for uh, just random stuff chain for hanging engines block of wood obviously for uh under jacks fender covers that sit down there what else on the other side oh yeah and all my uh, motive x tool all the funnels and stuff from motive x tool as well as a suction filler there on that one and there is my side cart like I said, this is my everyday thing. I am in this cart most often. I will grab what I need out of the main box. Usually I know what I'll need and then I'll just kind of pile the tools in here as they are needed. Gloves, of course, need those. Well, there we go. That's pretty much all the stuff that I have here in the way of uh, toolbox and everything that I use day to day here in the shop. Well, there you go, guys. Updated toolbox tour in the books. Like I said, I know I'm a little bit long-winded, but you know what? I really like talking about my tools. So it's been a fun time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this update to it. I'll probably do one for the home toolboxes also. I know everybody is kind of caught up in this coronavirus thing. Uh, there's a lot of people laid off seeing uh, as you guys don't really have a whole lot to do at home if you have been laid off feel free to message me anytime on any kind of wants or needs uh, if you guys just want to talk about what we're doing on the channel or if about anything you guys are doing project wise at home I love hearing from my subscribers always great to hear from you guys uh, if you guys haven't already make sure you like the video hit the thumbs up button hit that subscribe button as well turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool awesome content just like this one here today we've got tons more stuff coming up on the channel so make sure to stop back and check us out thanks and as always you guys stay awesome